I never imagined my curiosity would lead me here. It all started when Jake and I, both huge football fans, decided to sneak into the locker room before the big game. We just wanted to see what the players were up to before they hit the field, maybe even grab a few autographs. But what we didn't anticipate was getting caught by the cheer team. We were hiding behind some lockers when suddenly the door swung open, and the cheerleaders poured in, laughing and chatting. Our eyes widened, and we froze, not wanting to draw any attention to ourselves. But of course, our luck ran out. One of the girls spotted us, and before we knew it, they had us surrounded. What are you two doing here? One of them demanded, hands on her hips. Jake and I stumbled over our words, trying to explain, but it was no use. They weren't having any of it. I think we should teach them a lesson, one of the cheerleaders suggested with a mischievous grin. The others nodded in agreement, and before we could protest, they had us hauled into the back of the locker room. Jake and I exchanged nervous glances as the girls rummaged through their gear. What are they planning? Jake whispered to me, but I didn't have an answer. Then it became clear. They pulled out two sets of their cheer uniforms and thrust them into our hands. Put these on, they ordered. At first, we thought they were joking, but their serious expressions said otherwise. We hesitated, but the looks on their faces told us we didn't have much of a choice. Reluctantly, we changed into the uniforms, feeling utterly ridiculous in the tight skirts and pom-poms. You're not done yet, one of them said as they pulled out some makeup. Jake groaned, but we both sat still as they applied blush, lipstick, and whatever else they deemed necessary. When they were done, we barely recognized ourselves in the mirror. There, now you're ready, the leader of the cheer squad said with a smirk. You're going to join us for practice before the game. Our eyes widened in horror. What? No way. Jake protested, but they were insistent. They dragged us out onto the field, where the rest of the team was warming up. The coach raised an eyebrow but didn't say anything. It seemed like everyone was in on this prank. We stumbled through the routine, trying our best to keep up. The cheerleaders made us repeat the moves over and over until we got it right. By the end, we were exhausted, but they didn't stop there. Oh, you're not off the hook yet, one of the girls said. You're performing with us at the game. And that's exactly what happened. Before we knew it, we were standing on the sidelines, dressed as cheerleaders, ready to perform in front of the entire stadium. My heart pounded as the music started, and somehow, Jake and I managed to get through the routine without completely embarrassing ourselves. To our surprise, the crowd loved it. They cheered us on, thinking it was all part of the show. By the end, we were actually starting to enjoy ourselves, though we'd never admit it to anyone. After the game, the cheerleaders untied us and let us change back into our clothes. They were laughing, saying we'd done a great job and that we'd made the game memorable. As Jake and I walked away, still in disbelief over what had just happened, I couldn't help but laugh. Well, we wanted an adventure, I said, nudging Jake. Yeah, but I didn't think it would involve becoming cheerleaders, he replied with a grin. After that first game, Jake and I thought our ordeal was over. We figured we'd slip back into our regular routines and forget this ever happened. But fate had other plans for us. The next morning, as we walked into school, still laughing about our unexpected cheerleading debut, we were stopped by the head cheerleader, Emily, at the entrance. Good news, boys, she said with a sly grin. The coach loved your performance so much that he's decided you two should stay on the squad, for the whole season. Jake and I stared at her, mouths agape. Wait, what? I stammered. You can't be serious. Oh, I'm very serious, she replied, crossing her arms. You two are officially part of the team now. And that means you'll have to stick to the role, including the uniform. Our protests fell on deaf ears. The next thing we knew, we were handed new uniforms, makeup kits, and even instructions on how to style our hair. We were expected to dress like cheerleaders not just during games, but every day at school. Emily made it clear, if we didn't follow through, the whole school would know how we ended up in this situation in the first place. Reluctantly, Jake and I decided to go along with it. We figured it was better than the alternative, being the laughing stock of the entire student body. But the first day dressed as cheerleaders at school was a nightmare. We drew stares and whispers everywhere we went. The girls giggled and asked us about our outfits, while the guys either laughed or gave us strange looks. It was embarrassing, to say the least. But as the days turned into weeks, something unexpected started to happen. We began to adapt. The cheerleaders, initially just our captors, became our friends. They helped us with our hair and makeup, taught us how to walk with confidence in our skirts, and even included us in their social circles. 
Jake and I started to get used to our new routines. We got better at cheerleading, too. With each practice, we improved, and soon we were performing the routines as if we'd been doing it for years. At school, people slowly stopped staring, and some even started complimenting us. You guys are killing it out there, one of the football players said after a game. I never would have guessed you were new to this. By midseason, Jake and I were full-fledged members of the cheer squad, both on and off the field. We attended cheer sleepovers, went shopping with the girls, and even got involved in the squad's fundraising activities. We were living the life of high school cheerleaders in every sense of the word. But what surprised us most was how natural it all started to feel. The more we embraced the role, the more comfortable we became in it. I found myself actually enjoying getting ready in the mornings, spending time with the squad, and even the attention we got at school. It wasn't just the cheers and the routines, it was the whole experience. We had a tight-knit group of friends, and being part of something bigger than ourselves felt good. As the end of the season approached, Jake and I started to realize that we didn't want it to end. The idea of going back to being just the guys felt strange, almost foreign. We talked about it one day after practice, sitting on the bleachers while the sun set over the empty stadium. Do you ever think about what it'll be like when this is over? I asked Jake. He was quiet for a moment, then nodded. Yeah. And honestly, I'm not sure I want to go back to how things were. Same, I admitted. This. I don't know, it just feels right. Like we're finally part of something. Jake smiled. Maybe we don't have to go back. That was all it took. We made up our minds right then and there. We weren't going to give up our new lives so easily. We loved being part of the squad, and we didn't want to let that go. So, when the coach announced that the squad was going to be continuing into the next year, Jake and I were the first to sign up. We stayed cheerleaders through the rest of high school, fully embracing the roles we'd been thrown into. The more time passed, the more we realized that this wasn't just a punishment or a joke, it was who we were now. And by the time we graduated, we knew that we wouldn't change a thing. The day of graduation, as Jake and I stood in our caps and gowns, surrounded by our cheer squad friends, we looked back on the crazy journey we'd been on. From sneaking into that locker room to becoming cheerleaders for the entire season, it had been one wild ride. But we wouldn't trade it for anything. It wasn't just about the cheerleading, it was about finding ourselves in the most unexpected way possible. And as we tossed our caps into the air, I knew that this was just the beginning. No matter where life took us next, Jake and I would always have this experience to look back on. We'd started out as curious boys and ended up as confident cheerleaders, and we wouldn't have it any other way.